Hello and welcome back to Digging for Dread. This time, as promised, we are launching a space station. Rather slowly at first. But after all these seven engines in the first stage, there will be a different news pathway into orbit. Now the top of this does look Stage set. Second stage is fired. We are on our way. Despite the little hiccup with the fuel feed, I'll dive into the uh, plans for this rocket and see where that went wrong before I publish it. Jupiter tank and um, 
eight um, engines on the uh, first stage there. Okay, we are plenty high. 200 kilometers might be a little too high, I think. That's what happens when you don't pay attention to these things. So let's just bring that down to about 150. There we are. Now, I've kept my periaps low so that this second stage will uh, just fall back to the surface and the uh, upper stages of the Saturn 1B were pretty much exactly the same as the uh, Saturn 5 with the, um, the S4 upper stage which is slightly different to the S4B that the Saturn V used. And click. Where the hell did that go? Oh well. So the uh, Saturn one was used to test uh, the um, command module and lunar module in orbit around Earth before shooting them both out to the moon. And it could launch one or the other. It could either a command service module or a lunar module, not both. But it basically allowed NASA to run tests on their equipment before sending it all the way out to the moon. And it's sort of my favorite rocket from the uh, you know, American space program for the shuttle because well there's clustered tanks on the first stage it just looks so interesting so now we are approaching circularization and if you can see in here sort of you have a docking port in there and that will fulfill our contract for launching a space station now it's only one of the tiny 0.75 meter tank, no, tanks, docking ports. So they're not terribly large. But it fits the bill. And now with the funds we get from this contract, we'll be able to upgrade R&D so that we can then get bigger and better docking ports to expand this station. So, any particular science? No. If I wanted to uh, step over and say goodbye to Bob and Bill, is they're going to be up here for a while yet, and I meant to go IVA. Get back in there. That's weird. <laughs> How you doing? Got nice view of Kerbin out there. And the um, contract states that, uh, yeah, we need to support at least five Kerbals, and it's all done. So that's four Kerbals in the can here and one in the cockpit. But the cockpit is not staying here, so that's a little bit cheating, but I prefer to think of it more as uh, being resourceful. So now, it's time for the Valentina to say goodbye. And off she goes. 
now we can probably see that docking port there and in here under this fairing we have batteries and avionics no control though so this thing can't reorient itself at all it's pretty much just dead weight but we will fix that with subsequent parts now to bring Valentina back so facing retrograde we are clear of the station so okay apparently I haven't set up my joystick correctly but there's fire retrograde and I've got no idea how much Delta V we have but it should be enough to get us back and also once we're clear of the station we will get rid of these decouplers and let's just do a bit of physical time warp while watching our periaps decrease And being that we're only 150 kilometers up, we should be able to put this at about 40 kilometers. Or we'll go 35 just to be safe. And still return. these they're probably gonna shoot back off out into space but we can let them now it's a nighttime re-entry so let's just time accelerate through it now I don't know if these RCS ports are going to survive, but we can at least hope. And four times time acceleration. Not much to see, it's just a boring re-entry. I did mention how I'm a bit underwhelmed with the heating, it doesn't seem to be very dangerous at all. And Val lands safely, pretty standard. I got a bit of science, and let's see what else is going on at the KSC. Yep, all that good stuff. Now we have plenty to upgrade R&D. We don't have enough science to uh, do R&D yet, but what I can do. Here's show off a new plane that we have. I thought the uh, Seeker Mark II was beginning to show its age. It was kind of slow and uh, not very sleek. So I built this. This is a uh, piece of the Canberra bomber from World War II. Well, actually not World War II. Um, I believe the uh, Korean War was where it was mostly utilized. But we've got new retractable landing gear. And two engines this time. So as you can see, we're already above 200 meters per second. full science suite on it including a new pressure sensor up 
Ja, wir müssen. Pat doesn't seem to like it very much, but I certainly do. So this will allow us to go further and faster. So seeing this plane a bit more in coming episodes. Not for entire missions, I will be cutting it up so it's not a complete drag. But it means I'll be able to do survey missions a lot quicker. And with these two engines and larger wing, higher. I can easily make a 45 degree climb and not peter out immediately. So, we've got a new mod with uh, NavHUD. So this will make flying planes, especially landing them, a lot easier. And as a bonus, it will also highlight um, survey locations on the HUD. You don't have to go finding them with respect to the nav ball. So, that's about it for this episode. It is a bit short. But, there will be more, much more to come. For one, we will be uh, revisiting that moon probe that uh, failed last episode. I'll rebuild it and we'll finally find out just where Neil Kerman has stranded himself. So until then, see you guys later.